So we've brought the bad weather with us from London to <laughs> Germany and uh, we're Thanks. here at the new Riesen Müller factory um, and Heiko is going to take us on a little tour um, and uh, very excited to see this new beast in action. <laughs> we moved uh, end of January and then production started mid of February. And you've got 20,000 square meters here? 22,000 square meters. Production plus, plus all the office yeah. rooms and we have um, the complete land is 40,000. So, wow. okay. Am I right to say it's about 350 bikes per day? That's, that's what we are doing in the moment. 320 to 350 yeah, and a day. And a potential maximum of about double that? Of 700. Um, well, this is um, this is planned for maybe uh, 2024, something like this. So, in, in three to four years. This is amazing. Yeah. And I worked that we worked that out to uh, one bike every uh, four minutes. Every four minutes, a bike comes out. That's okay, that's wow. the way it is. Of course, it takes more time to produce it because we have 25 uh, positions where the bike is. Um, is assembled, so we have 25 workers standing there. And they are assembling the bikes, and all from every four minutes, a bike comes out. That's the correct. And that's with 450 employees working. All together, yeah, all together. Yeah, actually, in this production line, we are producing all the control technology bikes. For example, the, the D-Lite and, um, yes, as homage. I said, we have Homage, Culture, all these models. So we have, um, in this line, we have um, 20 um, positions where the bike is assembled. So on each position, there's one guy standing and um, he's, he or she is assembling certain parts and then the bike goes to the next uh, position. So the next, next guy is taking over. Um, so that's the way we are assembling the bikes. And the good thing is you always have the quality control by the next, by the next workers yeah. who also check what you have uh, assembled here. So that's a perfect system. And in the end, of course, you have a complete quality control of the completely finished it's bike. Up, yeah. yeah, and, and then it's even packed into the carton box and shipped out, so they are really doing uh, the complete production um, of the bikes, um, starting with the frame and um, ending in the carton box. And, and here you see the, the lift of the, um, of the wheels. They are coming from, uh, from the top down. Um, actually, we have a a, transport, a transportation system for frames and, uh, and wheels. We are also producing the wheels in-house yeah. uh, in, in the second part of the production hall. Um, and then the frames and wheels are coming, um, coming down here so the worker can just take the next wheel and it's definitely the wheel which, you, which he's, he needs for the next bike. So high this speed, high speed right. The CX are being produced in the same... In the same, same production line. So, and the bike is, yeah, this bike is, this is almost actually ready to, uh, ready to ship. So final tests happening here. Yeah, final and, checking, uh, um, the function, the specification, final checking, so. The complete perfection. Yeah, yeah, that's it, right. Can you give us a little bit of a brief story about how the idea was born to start Riesen Müller, the bike company? At all. From from, <laughs> from like, the very beginning, you, my gap, my understanding is, is you were at university together with Marcus, right? And you started the Birdie as the initial project for a university project. Is that right? Well, in the beginning, it was just a private project, the yeah. Birdie. So we we just, I mean, we have been working on bikes since ever, Marcus and me. Um, then we met us um, during our first uh, year uh, at the university, and then yeah, we were we were uh, working together on bikes, uh, different bikes. We we worked on a very light mountain bike and stuff like that. So uh, then uh, Marcus had the uh, initial idea uh, to do a, to produce a folding or, or not to produce to build a, fir a first. Uh, 
sample of a of a folding so bike. So this is way before Brompton. This is like 1988, 1990. Uh, it, it around yeah. Well, it was um, 1992 to be 19, honest. Okay. 1992. But actually, we had no idea about Brompton or yeah. uh, anything. We we heard about the Moulton. Yeah, yeah. This was much earlier, but yeah. Brompton, to be honest, we had no idea about yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, the the world was smaller during that day. Yeah. You you didn't have the internet yeah, where yeah. you can could just check uh, any product. So yeah. and so on. So London was far away. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so well, we, we we were just um, we were just making uh, prototypes and stuff. And then in 1993, there was a, an innovation. Um, a championship kind of um, where we took part and we we won a prize uh, a special prize um, for this first prototype of a birdie and then we said okay that's that's um, that's could be a start of a company yeah. um, and then we booked um, um, we booked a small uh, booth on the Eurobike 1993 and we have shown this birdie well, people came, have been interested in that, and we thought, okay, that, that might be a good idea. There, there might be enough interest. Um, so we, we just continued uh, building the next prototypes. And then in 1994, um, we had finished uh, university during these days, and then uh, we have been standing again on the Eurobike. Uh, and then this guy from Taiwan, Mr. George Lin, uh, from Pacific Cycles, he came to our booth and he, he, he looked at that bike and he said, uh, I want to build this bicycle. And this, this was actually, um, yeah, that was really good luck because we, before we were looking for producers uh, of this bike and it was just not possible to find yeah. anybody. Uh, we went to Italy, to different German companies and it was, uh, for, for these companies, it was too complicated. Uh, during these days, it was a full suspension frame uh, and uh, very complex. So um, they all said that's not possible. And George Lin from Pacific Cycles, he had uh, he had uh, inquiries from Japan, uh, from customers who uh, who wanted to have um, uh, um, folding. a folding Sorry. bike, right? Um, and his idea was to to produ produce this folding bike for for his Japanese customers. Markus just uh, booked a, a ticket for the next plane to Taiwan. He he went back with George Lin uh, to have a look at the at, in this company, um, and they already started to to build the next prototypes, production prototypes, and so on. And um, and it was just a question of a few months, and the bike was ready uh, for shipment. So okay. so actually in in 1995. The first three containers left Pacific Cycles. One container uh, uh, was ordered by 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 um, this company from uh, Japan. Yeah. One was uh, ordered uh, by us, of course, um, and the third container uh, went to the USA. Um, so actually, we had a start of uh, the birdie in three in three um, countries or even continents. And this was really That's a great fantastic. start. Yeah. It was really a great start, yeah. Uh, so this was uh, the very beginning. And then we developed um, full suspension bikes. So this was actually our, our great idea. We, we, we studied um, mechanical engineering. So we n just knew that a full suspension bike is the perfect bike. So uh, we totally concentrated on this category and during these uh, days, uh, full suspension mountain bikes have already be on, uh, been on the market, yeah. but no the, full suspension no comfort, uh, comfort yeah. bikes yeah. Or, or, or city bikes, yeah. trekking bikes, uh, stuff like that was just not existing. Yeah. Uh, so then with, with our bikes like, like Culture or Delight, this have been completely new yeah. categories of bike. So this was quite su uh, successful uh, during the first years. Uh, so we we produced or, or we, we designed one bike after the other. Um, yeah, even even a cargo the, the bike. Are still non electric at this stage. Uh, um, of course, yeah. non electric, non electric, yeah. right? Um, well, the first the first approach to electric bikes already was in 1996, very early. Um, we we built it. Uh, um, 
a birdie with the first um, bionics, bionics system, uh, system yeah. in 1996. So this yeah. was a very, very early electric yeah. bike, but too many problems uh, yeah, during yeah, these yeah, days yeah. and no market. I mean, this was very early. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So then after, after all these years of, of, of uh, presenting new um, concepts of full suspension bikes, um, we, we saw that the e-bike market was growing. Uh, this was in the years of uh, yeah, 2004, 2005, Flyer in, in, in Switzerland came up um, selling some, some bikes. But these bikes, they all looked the same. They had a deep uh, step over height. They were designed for people uh, 70 plus, yeah, uh, yeah, which yeah. could not ride a normal bicycle anymore. So actually um Wasn't we thought interesting the... yeah we thought an e-bike must be more than than bringing old people on bikes which are not able to ride an, a normal bike anymore so our idea was to have a yeah to have a bike for commuting going to work and actually a bike for for leaving your car and jumping on the yeah. bike and this was our our idea so um in 2008 our, our first uh a lineup of of three e-bikes came on the market and one of them um, during these days was already the delight uh, 45 yeah um so uh, delight with uh, with supports up to 28 miles per hour uh, 45 kilometers per hour so uh, this was really a completely new product product actually the first oh, yeah. the first speed pedal leg which was which had uh, the official um, type, approval. type approval for yeah. for Germany during these days, so this was a completely different approach. Yeah. And in the beginning, every everybody said, "Who should buy these kind yeah, of bikes? Yeah, it's yeah. totally, uh, t totally, um, uh, it's not the demand. Yeah, it's something totally different, and um, nobody understood that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we said, okay, let's see. Um, um, and yeah, well. In this moment, um, that this was a big uh, growth already in the beginning with the first e-bikes, and then in in uh, 2011, uh, Bosch came out with their engine. And to be honest, in the first three years, we used Bionics and TransX um, motors, and we had some technical problems with these systems. And then in 2011, Bosch came out, and we totally changed to Bosch from one year to in, to, yeah. to the other because we saw the potential of, of, of this uh, new system, uh, system amazing, yeah. um, which really worked from the beginning on. And then one year later, 2012, um, we made the decision not to continue any non-electric bikes or to, to say it the other way around, to concentrate on e-bikes. And that's where Blue Label was... Uh, born or not? Blue Label is is a yeah. Blue Label is a special story. This was a um, we introduced Blue Label uh, 2011 already um, with the first Bosch e-bikes, which had no full suspension system. Yeah. Because our idea was, reason Müller, Müller stands for full suspension, premium, full, premium, size, yeah. uh, full suspension technology, and um, Blue Label was like affordable city community. That's bike, it, yeah. right? And and actually. Um, yeah, we, we thought we will just see how it works, and if it works, then it might be possible to reintegrate this to the to the main brand. But in the case that it it it, it didn't work, yeah. we had the chance to to uh, yeah. to cut it again with it with simple. yeah Recent without without yeah, yeah without uh, without um, yeah destroying our brand image. So this was the idea of Blue yeah. Label, um, and then. Well, 2000, 2012, we, we made the decision to concentrate on e-bikes. Uh, and this was, I mean, during that time, it was... Uh, bold, quite bold. Yeah, but definitely. Now it's, now it's so obvious, yeah, yeah of course, and this was the right decision. But uh, during that time, we had a lot of customers who, who, who had big problems with e-bikes during these days. Um, I mean, bicycle dealers yeah. who, who just didn't understand the new trend and they yeah. said oh well I can't I, I'm not able to buy any bikes from you anymore <laughs> and stuff like that so 
I said, just buy e-bikes, yeah? yeah. And they said, oh, that's no bicycle, that's, I yeah. don't know. Of course, now they are all selling e-bikes yeah. or they are not existing anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, um, We're seeing that in the UK now, so. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and since then, um, yeah, I mean, we, we introduced interesting models. Um, we try to, to um, yeah, to, to, to bring models for all kind of transportation, for traveling, commuting, and so on. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah. No, the, well, the rest is, is history, isn't it? I guess it is. Um, <laughs> do you remember when you first learned to ride a bike? Um, like, you know, I don't know, maybe you were like three or something like that, or were you I older? Think I, was, or? I was four, yeah. And four. at that stage, you became obsessed with bicycles. That's and, it. And you, you wanted to be in the bicycle industry and make bikes from. Well, from may, maybe not with four, but. Uh, <laughs> But at least when I when I started to 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 study mechanical engineering, yeah. for me that was the decision that this is the um, the basis for for, uh, for for doing something with bicycles. Um, yeah, because when I was ten or twelve, I was spending all my days on on the bicycle or, yeah. or or repairing, uh, try try out new things, stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I thought so. It seems that anyone at the top of their game has to be obsessed from <laughs> yeah, a young that's age. It. That's it. Yeah. Whether you're a tennis player or you know a, a, a bicycle entrepreneur, or whatever it may yeah, be, yeah, yeah. has to be obsessed. Um, okay, so often we compare um, uh, Reese and Muller in the UK to Bentley and Rolls Royce. Oh, yeah, it's very, a lot. So <laughs> yeah, when people come into my um, uh, business and, and you know they want to learn about e-bikes I, I make that comparison it really helps people understand okay. the brand um, and we say we compare other brands as well to some other cars I'm not yeah. going to say who because some of them might not be so happy but I think <laughs> Bentley Rolls Royce is definitely a, a good one um, where do you see uh, Reese and Muller in 10 years um, from uh, today I mean you think yeah where would you say well, actually, I think we are we are on a straight way, and and it's if everything runs like like we 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 would like to have it run, then I think we will be one major player of premium e-bikes in the world. Yeah. Um, actually, I I'm sure that um, e-bikes will be established in all in, all in, continents, in, I guess. Yeah, in all, even in, like South yeah. America, even That's Africa. It. That's think, right. Yeah. In, yes. Maybe not in not in each uh, each single town, but in in the in the major towns, yeah. uh, it will be established. Um, and and our idea, our obsession is to be part of this uh, um, development, to be in in all the big cities where where e-bike might be uh, important for Essential, for transportation. Yeah. Essentially, right. So this is our idea. It's it's hard to say how many bikes we will sell then, but I yeah. think that's that's not really important. Yeah. Uh, we will. I think um, the demand has to be produced, but um, it's not important whether it's one hundred thousand or two hundred thousand a year, whatever. Yeah. It's. I think it's important that, uh, yeah, just to be on these markets, to be part of the of the movement of of e bikes. That's what we want. Good. Yeah. Um, that's great. Um, so one thing that I've identified about Risa Muller as a company, which is, I think, the most important part for, for, for me, and I think um, to separate your, your company from anyone else's, is the fact that um, you and Marcus still own the company. That's right. 50-50, yeah. and there's no group, there's no um, board of uh, venture capitalists, mm. and you can see the innovation and the passion go from you, from your dream, from a young age. It stayed alive and it goes through the production, through into the box, and the box is then seals that, mm -hmm. and then it's opened by us, mm -hmm. and then it goes to the customer. That is, I think, one of the most important things about mm -hmm. Reese and Muller, and um, it's so obvious. And th there's, there's not any other companies um, really well there's not many other companies like that in 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 the world really right, in, yeah. just in general and i think yeah. that's just the foundations of that is so important and um i really respect that it's great for for us this was always very important to to stay independent because i think we we have so many ideas about the future if you have a managing board or whatever or some investors mm. 
it's I think it's really hard to to convince them to do new ideas. I yeah. think they would stay on 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 products which are just running in the yeah. moment, yeah. but. Uh, they are just interested in getting out cash, um, yeah. and and our mission is uh, to always to invest uh, the money which we earn in new products, yeah. in new technologies. Keeping the principles. Yeah. And, yeah. That's it. So, yeah. um, and 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 we we definitely want to stay independent. Um, with this, with Miller is not for sale, not even one percent of yeah. our yeah, shares. That. That's yeah. that's our principle, and and for us this totally works I mean of course uh, of course um, for us personally it might be it might be easier to sell something we get a lot of money but to be honest I don't need that I have yeah. my bike uh, I have my <laughs> my little house and everything is fine so I'm, I just want to build bicycles you know yeah, and yeah. that's my passion and not not earning lots of money yeah. or stuff like that so yeah. that's totally fine for me 